Hey, Mudwater folks. My name is Kira Anastasia. I'm in snowy Portland, Oregon. And I just wanted to let you know that I am really enjoying my mud water. I am a yoga and meditation teacher and a Ayurvedic practitioner who has always had an addiction to coffee and couldn't beat it and knew that it was not good for me or my body um, and made me quite antsy and hyper, which I didn't like, and maybe even a little angry, to be honest. So a couple weeks ago, I decided I would give mud water a shot. And having spent time in India and really loving chai, I was super skeptical. I didn't think it would taste good. And I am loving it. So thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for this great product. And I will definitely be getting more. Cheers. Hey, Kira, stoked you're enjoying your mud. And thank you for sending that in. If anyone else wants to send a voice memo in to be played on this podcast, bust out your phone, let us know who you are, where you're listening from, where you love drinking your mud. And if we play it, we will send you a box of mud. You can just send those voice memos to podcast at mudwtr.com. Welcome to Trends with Benefits. Here we give you short form podcasts, little microdosed slices of wisdom to take into your day. And this one is with none other than Mark Devine. Most people think mental toughness when they imagine a Navy SEAL. What they don't expect is a thoughtful, yoga-innovating, joking professor of leadership named Mark Devine. At 26, he graduated as honor man ranked number one trainee of the Navy SEAL BUDS class out of a group of 170. Mark then served for nine years total on active duty and 11 as a reserve SEAL, retiring as commander in 2011. His leadership of teams was so effective, the government tasked him with creating a nationwide mentoring program for SEAL trainees. Mark Devine is an author, and more than that, he's really a deep thinker and philosopher. I certainly enjoyed this conversation. I hope you do too. Please welcome to the Trends with Benefits podcast, Mark Devine. I just wrote down a quote from a poet named David White. Oh, he's who, great. Love that. He's so great. Oh, I, I, I was j- just recently um, uh, introduced to him and I I wrote down this quote about ambition that then I threw away. So as you were answering, I was flailing around trying to find this quote. (laughs) Did you find it? No, I can't find it, but I'm (laughs) going to paraphrase it. But the the paraphrase is that ambition is a word that lacks ambition. While it's important for the young to have ambition, maybe it, it calcifies a more powerful unknown. And oftentimes the ambitious, even the ones who we regard highly in their young life, we pity them as they become old because Mm -hmm. they have not been able to be flexible to that more powerful unknown. Mm -hmm. And when you were answering what you said, you, 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 you were really talking about it in, within the context of being flexible at any point in your life. You Mm -hmm. said you might be on the path that's right for you for now, but that might change. Um, And I think that, you know, I I would imagine that a lot of people who read your work and, and listen to you speak inherently have a lot of ambition and Mm -hmm. they maybe have a high pain tolerance um, and they think that that's a real asset for themselves. I certainly did. And it's, and it's probably the thing that I'm working to get over most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was wondering if you could articulate and, and just further expand on the power of leaving room for the unknown, um, mm-hmm. And what that can give way to and and the power of not being not holding too tightly to 
the kind of person you think you need to become and the life you think you need to live? Yeah, that's such a great question. You know, the term ambition is typically used in outward achievement, right? And, or the accomplishment of something worthy, right? Or that's perceived as good by society, whether it is ultimately, you know, is a, is a matter of perspective or subjective, um, you know, experience. And so that's, that's kind of the outward living, the doingness, right, of things. But then there's this kind of inward aspect that we've been talking about through that, that, that we discover through contemplation and meditation and the inter, internal practices. And so there's really no, the only thing that you could consider to be ambition in the internal sense is the ambition to grow because there's no there there, right? You don't get a prize for enlightenment. Your prize might be that you give up all your wealth <laughs> and walk away. I, I met a guy at SealFit once who was an Indian guy. We were down the road from Self-Realization Fellowship, our beautiful training center in Encinitas, California. It's no longer, we no longer have it. We kind of run out of town because it's a whole different story by the, um, by the bureaucrats. Anyway, so this is a sidebar. I'm going to come back to the main point. He comes into our training center. And the reason he, we were up having breakfast this is during one of our 50 hour nonstop events, which you would by the way, love. You're welcome to come 50 hours, nonstop training. It's, it's a pretty world renowned. It's called Kokoro, which means whole mind or, or merging heart and mind in your actions. And I had uh, just given a, a talk on leadership and I had some principles on the board and right in the middle was silence, the word silence. So this guy, this Indian guy walks by and it says seal fit on the window. And he's like, oh, interesting, seal fit, hardcore. And then he looks inside and it says silence on the board. And he, he literally just walks into my gym. No one's around. And I was just taking a break outside while the uh, team and the students were eating dinner. And I see him staring at the board. So I went down to say hi. And it turns out this guy was fascinating. And he was like, wow, I was just drawn in here. This is fascinating. I didn't, you know the principles on your board, it sound a lot like, you know, yoga. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, there's a lot that yoga can come in many forms, right? And I'm, you and I know, I'm not talking about the physical practice of yoga. I'm talking about the, the oldest science of personal development and integration. And anyway, so he said that, well, yeah, he told me his story. My, his story was that, um, He's heading back to India for a three-year silent retreat. Three or three months and three weeks and three days or something like that. I don't, I'm not sure why the threes. And he had just given 50%, the 50 of the software company they had built that he owned to his partner. Not going to get it back. He just handed it over to him. And this is, and he's basically um, preparing himself for the, the third fourth turning of his life, right? In the, the yoga tradition or the, that Indian tradition, Hindu tradition sees life in these four quarters, you know, youth and youth and vigor, and then getting into professional life and the family life, and then slowing down and being more in service and philanthropy and, and teaching. And then the fourth turning, you know, the 75 to 100 years old is really then turning in back to the, in, you know, to yourself and toward God. And that's a solitary journey. And so in that phase of your life, oftentimes they leave everything behind, including your family sometimes. And it was, it, it really struck me like, wow, that interior, that internal journey has nothing to do with the accumulation of things degrees, wealth, entities, trophies. You leave all that behind. You know, like the old saying, you can, can't take it with you, but you can die trying. None of that stuff matters in the ultimate, you know, in the ultimate end game. So back to your question. I think it's natural in the first two quarters to have a lot of ambition, 
in the first quarter up to your 20s, mid 20s, it's really, a, there's athletic ambition. My ambition to be a Navy SEAL was certainly an outer ambition, although I was starting to tap into that inner spiritual path and, you know, starting to ask questions there. And then, you know, we begin to, and we begin to settle down a little bit. We have families, we build some money. Then our ambition becomes about, you know, security, success, and significance. And then that third, but we're starting to turn inward a little bit more, right? This is where like you start to think, what does it mean? What are my values? What's my real purpose? Cause you know, I'm getting into my now thirties and forties and I don't want to be on the wrong path. And a lot of people are on the wrong path. And that's where the midlife crises happen. Cause they're like, oh shit, I've invested 20 some odd 30 years. And I got this house and this nice car and this business, but I don't have any clue why I'm doing any of that stuff. Cause it's, it's not me. That's like that, you know, if someone finds meditation or has a crisis and all of a sudden they have that, that awakening and they're like, oh my, I'm on the wrong path. What is my path? Then they're drawn toward spiritual practices, you know, the Adi Shanti seminar. And they're like asking, looking, what's my path? How do I find it? Because they want that third quarter to be more significant than just the achievement of those outward signs of success. So then they'll hopefully find that. And then the third quarter is kind of like 50, 50 internal and 50% external, right? There's much more of an internal journey. Spiritual practice picks up They're very clear about what not to do. And, you know, this is like what I was talking about earlier. This is where I'm at. I don't want to do anything that's not in alignment with my calling. And I don't want to do anything that has puts negativity out in the world. I want to make an impact, but an impact on the quality of the world, not just on my bank account. You know, so we see a lot of social entrepreneurism, philanthropy, people really becoming servant leaders. And then that turning in is completed in the fourth quarter of life where achievement becomes meaningless in the external sense. It's all just, are we, um, how are we going to leave this world from a spiritual sense, right? Hey, it's Kyle again. Head over to trendswithbenefits.com and sign up for our newsletter to get weekly stories about psychedelics, adventure, and well-being.